okay so what is object is all the objects mm -hmm. that you create in the salesforce okay let's say object mm -hmm. okay if you go to all the objects that you have in the salesforce see all the custom object or even the standard objects whatever standard objects you have from here okay so all these objects that are mentioned so all these come under as object okay so they are salesforce object any custom or standard objects that you create in salesforce they are called as objects okay okay so just like if you go to opportunities and if you try to create any new opportunity then if you try to create one new opportunity let's say okay so here you have to put some required fields okay you have to put one name all these fields you have to fill in right so when you go in when you mm -hmm. save it okay when you save it one record is created okay just like that if you want to create one record from here using the s object so what you can do is we will open one anonymous window okay so for mm -hmm. a normal uh, object for a sale uh, for a apex class what do you create a object for apex class using new keyword right mm -hmm. so we use mm -hmm. new keyword to create object for a, a class object okay if you want to create object for a salesforce s object then also similar way you have to create using the new keyword okay mm -hmm. let's say if you want to create one object for uh, let me okay let's say opportunity okay so in that case what you have to do is you have to first right opportunity okay then you have to define one uh, variable for that let's say opp equals to new opportunity okay so just like how you're creating object for a uh, apex class similarly you create mm -hmm. object for s object as well okay and the same applies for all the s objects let's say account also acc equals to new account Okay, so all this will work. So, so that's not only for the standard objects. For custom objects, also you can go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, if you go to any custom object that we have, let's say we have an object called uh, any other, let's say hotels. Okay, the object that we have created. So for this particular object, we have how many required fields that we'll see okay why required fields are important because when you create a new new record for this there are some fields which are required you have to populate the value for that particular field okay unless you uh, enter the value here or whatever in, is in the required field if you save it it will not let, let you save okay similarly yeah. similarly when you create an s object okay and if you try to insert it here okay if you try to insert that opportunity that you have created it will throw you an exception okay because the required fields are not met so if you execute the highlighted part now okay so insert mm -hmm. field the first exception because the required field is missing okay so these are the required fields it's a uh, it has clearly mentioned name stage name and close date so these things you have to mention before inserting into a database okay so before uh, going ahead with the s object i'll give you some examples of what a dml operation is okay mm -hmm. so before going ahead we need to know some of the dml operations what's a dml operation dml operation is uh, let me open this okay data manipulation language uh, it's a database manipulation language okay it's not data manipulation it's database because we are manipulating with the database we are inserting database. records in the database we are taking out out we are deleting okay so all that is dml operations so there are a couple of dml operations which is available in salesforce okay mm -hmm. which is insert okay update okay delete then you have undelete then you have upsert okay so all these are dml operations which is available to you then there is another class available for all this dml operation which is database class so using the database class also we can go ahead and we can do these dml operations 
okay so how to do that that we'll see later as of now we'll concentrate on the dml operations insert update delete and undelete and upset okay so upset let's put it upset here after update we'll put upset okay so what i insert will do whatever record that you have created okay like mm -hmm. uh, like this so insert will insert it into database okay it will try to insert okay. that record into the database okay let's see how insert works okay so as of now we uh, what we got an exception here saying that uh, this has to be uh, the fields of the required field has to be populated first okay mm -hmm. so that required field you can come here and from here also you can see what are the required fields anyways it has given you the exception and you can populate those fields first so we need to give one stage here we need to give one close a uh, close date and also we need to give an opportunity name opportunity. so there are two ways to add those required fields in the record mm -hmm. okay first way is through the constructor so using this you can pass uh, the values here let's say name equals to you can put the name here uh, whatever the mm -hmm. name you want let's say we will create one test opportunity okay and then separated by comma so just like calling a constructor here you're calling the opportunity constructor and you're passing these values okay okay so name equals to test opportunity and then uh, close date for close date you have to create new instance okay new instance of the date new so that we will create and then apart from that you have to create one stage also so stage also you can populate let's say stage but here you have to use the api name okay that is the important part here you have to use the api name okay mm -hmm. instead of using the label or the field name this you cannot use opt as opportunity name this you cannot use as close date like this or stage like this so you have to use the api name so you can get the api names from here so you just go here and view the fields so whatever is the required that you have to put from here so let's say our uh, first was opportunity name okay so opportunity name so the api name is name so you have to use name actually you don't have to use opportunity name. okay and then you have to use stage so stage then actual api name for stage is stage name okay. that is um, bro api name in the sense underscore underscore c will come no 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 api name see yeah correct that is there okay hmm. but even for like standard fields or standard objects the name is there na? so that name you have to use okay okay so field label you cannot use okay okay so underscore underscore c will only come if it is custom okay for standard direct name will for, standard will underscore for standard underscore c will not come because uh, okay. underscore c means it's custom for any custom object or custom field okay then underscore no c will come okay 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 so here name equals to this let's say uh, so we have to use the field names or the api names mm -hmm. okay so for close date we have to use close date like in a single word so we have to put close date let's say we'll put a uh, date dot today we'll put okay so today's date we have put okay and then mm -hmm. we separate it by comma and then you have to put stage name okay so the actual name that you have to use while you while using the apex you have to use stage name instead of stage okay so stage name you have to put here and stage name is a pick list so that pick list value you have to so let's say stay so either prospecting qualification closed one whatever you want you can choose it let's say we can choose prospecting we we'll choose prospecting okay okay now we will try to insert this okay now we'll try to execute the highlighted part and let's see what exception we have got okay cannot insert update activity a workflow or approval process update caused an error so one workflow is there because of that it is not yeah okay so in that case what i will do is i will go ahead and log into my own org which is the new in that there is no approval process nothing like that 
so there will be no interruptions there okay so uh, let me log in here So even see while inserting the uh, record doesn't matter if you're inserting it from the developer console or if you're writing an apex or if you're inserting it directly. So whatever the rules or the validation rule or the approval process or whichever process is running normally that will run here also. Okay. Okay. So it is same. So then you cannot uh, escape those validation rules or approval processes or workflow rule. So all these things will be here also. Okay. 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 Mm, okay. Use this one. Okay. We can go to our sales application, and we can open our developer console from here. I'll just remove this anonymous window. We'll open one developer console here. Yeah, you can develop a console here. Okay. Before that, if you want to be sure that if there is any validation rule or something, then you can just go to setup. Or you can go to opportunity here. And we can see go to any opportunity. And we can see the validations from here. So let's say view validation rules. As of now, there's no validation rule. So if we see like view approval process, I don't think any approval is also there. As of now, there's nothing. So we should not have any difficulty in setting that here. Okay, okay. So now we'll go to our developer console and we'll close this out and we will open our anonymous window. Okay. Okay, now you tell me how do we create an uh, opportunity here? <laughs> if you want to create one opportunity record, how do we create? Opportunity, some name under new opportunity first. <clears throat> okay, opportunity, let's say OPP equals to new opportunity. <clears throat> We have done. Okay. This we have done. Okay. Then. Mm. Then we have to give some mandatory field. Some. I mean, here if we if there is no mandatory field here, then we can directly insert the value. Okay. So we'll give some name here as test. <coughs> okay. Then we give one uh, close uh, date equals to let's say date today. Dot, date. today you can give. Or let's say then we have to put one stage name. Okay, stage name equals to we'll put uh, prospecting. Okay, after we do that, till now the opportunity is available only in the code. Okay, it's not going to the in our database. So to put mm -hmm. it into the database to insert in the database, we need a DML operation. So we'll use insert OPP. Okay, so now it should be insert. Now, if we execute the highlighted part, so if you see, there is no exception here. Now if we go to our developer console, in our logs also, there is no error here. So, we will go to our org and we go to opportunity and one test opportunity should be inserted here. In the recent opportunities, we will see test opportunity. Okay. So whatever close date we gave, the today's date has come here and prospecting. So mm -hmm. this is coming uh, as a, uh, what you call, uh, US timing. Okay, it's US time zone, uh, P, PST time. First month, yes. Yeah, it's PST yes. time. <coughs> because today is sixth here. Okay, but it's still mm -hmm. fifth there. Fifth there. Okay. And whatever stage we chose, prospecting, according to that, it is coming here. Okay, if we chose any other stage, it will come different. Okay, so similarly, whatever field you want to populate, let's say if you want to put some amount also, expected revenue, or 
account name if you want to include account name also okay that's a good thing so if you want to include one account name also then in that case how do we do because this is the field a relationship field okay mm. so in the relationship field actually if you see here in the lookup it will give you a couple of names to choose um, yes okay a couple of names you can choose from the account whatever account you have created those accounts you can mm. connect okay but using mm. the code how do you do okay using the apex or using the anonymous window how do you do so in that case you don't have to use the name so i think i have told you before also but that in the relationship field the field mm -hmm. will the actual data which is there in the uh, database that is the id okay so that's a 15 digit mm -hmm. id mm -hmm. okay. 15 or 18 yeah 15 or 18 it depends yeah. Okay, ID is same only, but when you uh, re like uh, receive it from the or when you query it from the database, it will come as 18 digit. Mm. Okay, so all the other, if you see here, it's all 15 digits. 15. Okay, but in the database, it's saved in the form of 18 digits. When you re uh, query that, it will come in 18 digits. Okay. 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 So in the account name, as it's a lookup relationship field, here you have to populate one account name and you have to put one ID you cannot give the name here okay so let's see okay. how you can insert account name as well okay so for that first we need the API name for this or whatever is the field name the actual field name that we need so how we can address that actually so we go to the view fields and here we pick up account name mm. so so account name to um, like address account name you need to write, write account here Okay. okay so let's come back to our database here our anonymous window so if you want to connect one account name even after insertion so if you uh, again put here let's say opp dot account equals to you put some id let's say if you put some 15 digit id for the account okay some random id you have given for account 15 digit Okay, if in case if you do that here and then you execute again, okay, execute the highlight button again, what will happen is it will insert another record with the name of desktop. Okay, here the same existing record is not updated. Okay, so our existing test op, this will not be updated here. Okay, this will be creating another record. Okay, if you execute it, because here we are creating a new instance. Mm. okay so every time you create a new instance a new record will be created so we don't want to do that okay as of now our database has this desktop already so what we can do is we have to retrieve that from the database using SOQL okay so anything that you want to retrieve from the database you need SOQL for that any record that you want to fetch from database okay for that you need SOQL okay, okay. <laughs> So using SOQL, you can retrieve any of the objects that you have created or even if it's a standard object, all those you can retrieve. Even if you want to retrieve some, uh, let's say, report or maybe some list view, all those things also you can retrieve. Because everything that you save in the database, it's saved in the form of ID. Okay, so using that ID or using the name of the report or using the name of the list view, you can retrieve those from the database using SOQL. Okay, so in this scenario here, we'll have to retrieve this opportunity with the name of test opportunity. Okay, and once we retrieve that, then we can update the account. Okay, so before updating the account, what we can do is we will have to, we can create one variable. Okay, we can create as many, as many variables as we want, but it will not create a new instance. So we'll have to create one placeholder for that opportunity that we are trying to retrieve from the database. Okay, because the database will give you the object, it will give you the opportunity object, but you have to address it somehow, like you have to hold it in some place, right? So for that, you need one variable. Okay, okay. so what we'll do here is we will write one opportunity, let's say we'll write OPP only equals to, and here we'll write one SOQL query. OPP. Okay, so in order to be sure that you are writing the correct SQL query, you can go to the developer console and you go to the query editor. Query editor. Okay, here you can just go ahead and type and you can check if the query is working fine or not. Okay, so 
what you write is you have to select so first you write one select statement select then then what do you write from no select from we have to select from some account name now yeah you have to select from account name but you cannot write select from directly so there are two statements i'll tell you one more time select from and then where there are three things when you're writing as sql query there are three things select okay. from and where these are the basic yeah. things so after select statement okay after select statement you have to write what are the fields that you want to select that is the first thing okay so you okay. have to select like name or id or account name whatever it is so whatever field which is available like these fields mm -hmm. are there so these fields mm -hmm. first you have to write here okay so once first the first step will be like field so okay. what you want to do is you want to select the fields select the fields okay so once you have the fields sorted like what all fields you want then you have to choose which object you want to retrieve it from so here what you give is you give the object name okay so you give the name of the object here from which mm -hmm. object you want and using soql you can retrieve from only one object at one time okay unless those objects are related if they are uh, if there is no relation between two objects then you cannot retrieve two objects at one time okay okay so using this you can retrieve the child objects of opportunity as well if you were using opportunity as object name okay or even the parent if you want you can retrieve the parent but there has to be some relationship then you can use okay. two objects and you can select the two object fields okay Okay. okay okay so select statement you got then we got from so from you have to use one object name here from which okay. object you want to retrieve so after okay. that yeah correct where correct so after that it comes the where where in this where you have to put some condition like it's not yeah. required okay and this where condition is not required if you don't put any where condition that means it is a select all statement okay so now it will select all the records from that particular op object and the fields that you men mentioned sorry okay so by default all the query will be like select star only okay but you cannot write select star it's not valid in sql so in if you uh, talk in form of like sql long language so the there you have to do select all or select star to get all the records okay but here by default salesforce will give you all the records Okay. okay unless you put any where condition so here what we want to do is we want to retrieve only the opportunity with the name of test opportunity okay we want only this opportunity to retrieve so in that case what we want to do is select whatever fields from whatever uh, object then we will put one where condition where uh, what is the field where name name, name equal to test. so here we'll put test opportunity test opportunity so here we have to put test opportunity okay so instead of fields so here we account. have to write let's say no not account as of now account yeah. is blank right now no, no we have to we have to retrieve account name no there that field name is account there yeah that field is account there but right now there is no value there Wait, let me show you okay right now in the account of that particular test opportunity there is no value right Mm. there is no value yes. as of now if you want you can retrieve that no problem that will retrieve okay. but it doesn't make sense what we have to do is we have to retrieve this whole object first okay okay so we have to retrieve the whole object first and then we have to insert that particular uh, field in that particular object so here we are trying to get a grasp of this particular object okay so we are grabbing this object and then we can change any field we want Okay. Yeah. So as of now, you can put anything here. Like in the SQL, you can retrieve any field. Doesn't matter. You just have to get one opportunity, which with the uh, name is test opportunity. So you can select anything. Let's say you can select ID, comma, uh, let's say account only. Okay. Let's select account only. Okay. So as of now, the account will be blank. From which object we want? From opportunity we want. Okay. So here we will choose from opportunity. Where name equals to test opportunity. Okay. 
and uh, just to be sure that it's this opportunity only we'll put stage name also okay so to add one or more uh, like filter conditions you can use and clause here so you can use and so where name equals to test opportunity and where stage name equals to prospecting you can put it here okay now if you execute we will got an error okay let's see what is there select id account okay okay so if you see as of now the account id is blank okay mm -hmm. so we got that particular object only that object is coming here so so that soql will always re result into a list okay so if you on the return type okay the return type of soql okay is always a list okay it will always be a list okay but you can use uh, an object also to save it in certain conditions you can also use one map to save it you can also use sets to save it okay but that by default it will always give you a list okay okay so in which condition it will you can use one object to save it if the list contains only one uh, like record okay so if this list contains only one record then you can save it in in one one certain object okay if it is returning like more than one record then you have here in the left side left hand side you cannot use one single object here you will have to use one list okay okay so that we'll see later Okay, as of now, let's try to just retrieve. So we will put one opportunity variable here, op equals to, uh, sorry, not new. Here we have to write one SOQL query. So we take our SOQL query and we put it in this bracket here. Okay, and semicolon is must in Apex after end of the line. Okay. Okay, so select ID, account ID from opportunity where name equals to uh, test top and stage name equals to prospecting. So this will give you the hold of that particular object this object whatever we created So now we are, will be back to the same position so that we can put some account there account ID Okay You got this point Yes, yes, okay. if you have any doubt you can ask me. Okay. No problem. Okay. Okay, so now this should give you the opportunity so let's try to just uh, see what we have so we'll put one system dot debug and we'll put whatever the op is there okay let's see what the result is okay then we execute the highlighted part okay. okay now we go to our developer console and one log should be generated for us we'll put one debug log here so if you see opportunity id is showing us this Okay, mm -hmm. but as there is no value in the account ID, so it is not showing that. Okay. Okay. So if you put some more information here, let's say if you want some name also, let's say name, also you want, and uh, let's say if you want some stage name also. Okay. So all these things it will show you. Now if you go ahead and and if you execute this, so all these things it will display for you. Now if you debug, see so now you see the name is there, stage name is there, okay, and the ID is there. Okay. Okay. So as of now we have got the hold of that particular object. So that means we can manipulate this object right now. We can manipulate the record. Hmm. Okay, so now we can manipulate the record. So what we can do is we'll remove this line and here we will write opportunity dot account okay equals to we'll put one id of one account okay so we need our one id of any account to associate so we can either go to an account here uh, and go to all accounts and we can pick up any id let's say we want to okay this one so we pick up this id and we can put it inside this Okay, here we have to put opportunity dot account ID. Okay, now let's try to execute this. Or no, okay, okay, fine. Let's try to 
uh, execute and then let's try to system dot debug so system dot debug what we will do is we will uh, show the value of only the account id and see if that account okay. id is updated or not okay okay or we can okay we will put opportunity again here okay so the whole object will be displayed along with the uh, stage name or along with the account id it will show the account id as well okay so if the account id is inserted it will show the account id so let's try to execute this one more time okay so we will execute the highlighted now we go to our developer console and one log should be generated okay we debug hmm. and if you see here account id is inserted here Okay. Yes. okay so one account id is inserted here okay so usually we are not we should not be doing like hard coding it okay what else you can do is you can retrieve the account id from the account object using the mm -hmm. um, query only okay so how you can do that is similar fashion how we uh, retrieve the opportunity object or the opportunity record similarly we can retrieve the account record also so yeah correct so here we are retrieving just one record right so that's why we can use our one object as well if you have to retrieve like more than one then it will directly throw you an error that it is not able to assign a list to one single object mm -hmm. okay because this is um, capable of holding only one object but this this is a list this will always result into a list if you do a sql query it will result into a list yes okay let me show you that also okay uh, by default it will always be a list if you want let me go ahead and check it out so we'll create one list of opportunity uh, okay and here in the, as opportunity is a list so in this case you have to use the index of that particular list so as of now this in uh, list will check the size of the list as well okay so system dot debug what we can do is we can do op dot size i think it's size or length i don't know length. anyways we'll check it out okay so now in this case uh, we'll put one message also here uh, array or maybe list size okay so opportunities uh, of uh, okay this list uh, index of this list so this is the zeroth uh, array okay or the zeroth index so the zeroth index will have the because it is retrieving only one record so it should be in the first uh, index only okay so mm -hmm. array always starts from zero okay array or the list uh, always starts from zero so the first value which the, which will be in the list that will always be from zero 0 1 2 3 4 5 and it will increase yeah. like that okay okay now if here if you want to debug you can debug like this also okay so now let's try to execute this and let's see what we get so account id is already there so hmm. here only it will uh, be available so we don't have to do this what we can do is we can put this also in the system dot debug log we can put system dot debug opportunity zero dot id okay and we can mention one comment here that this is our account id okay the account id okay now let's try to execute this and let's see what happens okay <coughs> okay now one log is getting generated here mm. okay so if you see the size of the list is one one okay and the account id is null as of now yes okay so we did not update the account mm. okay and here the opportunity name all these things are coming Okay, so all the values are coming here. Okay, so now let's go back to our developer console here and let's see. Uh, we go to our opportunity and let's see if the uh, account is connected here or not. 
okay if you see here still there is no account connected here mm. okay because why that is happening because we did not update it okay in the previous uh, if you let me just save this code first control C and let me just undo everything okay if you go back in time here We undo everything. It was not a list. Okay. So we were here. So in this, if we have updated the account ID, but we have not inserted in the database. Mm. Okay. So after this, what we have to do is we have to update opportunity. Okay. So now when we update, and now if we give opportunity dot account ID okay now it should give us one account ID okay because we are updating the opportunity and that field whatever field we are adding that field is getting updated okay so now if we execute highlighted and we come to our developer console we debug this okay and that ID is coming here so just to cross verify let's refresh this one account name should be populating here Okay. okay so unless you do the DML operation if you insert mm. or update it will not be updating the database okay okay that is only for the uh, any relationship or something no 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 that's for everything mm. let's say if you want to update some amount also or let's say if okay. you want to update some type okay what type is this uh, let's say new customer we'll update to new customer and we'll see if that is working or not okay so if you go to our execute anonymous here so so this is updated so that is done so what else we can do is so now if you write opportunity that will not work okay that will not work because if you execute only this line only this line will not recognize opportunity so what we will do is we will execute this line we will copy this and we'll come back here okay so now again we got the uh, grab of that particular opportunity where the uh, name was a test opportunity and stage name was prospecting okay yes. if you want you can add another condition here and uh, let's say account id is not equal to uh, null okay this will also give you same thing so this will verify that our account ID is having some value it is not having any null value mm -hmm. okay okay so now we got that opportunity now we have to update one field right so which field we want to update we have to update the type so type. I think for type it's the same type only okay for type it's type only so here we can write opportunity dot type equals to uh, we'll take it from the pick list here what is the type it was new customer so mm -hmm. how is it spelled a new customer okay so we can put as it's a string we have to put new uh, quotes and then you have to put new customer okay 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 now if you system dot debug and if we ty use type here <coughs> excuse me so mm -hmm. if we use uh, type here it will display you the value of the type it will give you new customer okay but it is not mm -hmm. coming from database Okay, it is coming from this particular moment here, this instance here. It is picking it from, yeah. from here. Okay, we'll cross verify. Okay, we'll cross verify. Now let's try to execute the highlighted part and let's see what happens. Now if we go to our developer console, okay, we go to debug. Our new customer is coming. Okay, new customer value is coming here. But let's try to yeah. cross verify that in here. If we refresh this, that type see that type is not here yes. okay so why it is showing in the debug log it's showing it from here opportunity dot type we have already mentioned as new customer so it has updated the variable okay but it is not okay. updating the database okay we okay. need to write update yes so we need to write one update statement now we have to update the opportunity again okay now if we execute this execute the highlighted part now our database will be updated. updated okay so now the type will be populated as a new customer here yes. okay
ओके 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 सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट इंसर्ट एंड अपडेट इफ यू वांट यू कैन गो एंड डिलीट दिस रिकॉर्ड आल्सो ओके लेट्स से इफ यू रिट्रीव द होल अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ अपडेटिंग लेट्स ट्राई टू ओके इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट व्हाट वी कैन डू लेट्स रिट्रीव द रिकॉर्ड वंस अगेन ओके एंड लेट्स ट्राई टू डिलीट दिस रिकॉर्ड एंड लेट्स सी व्हाट हैपेंस वी विल डिलीट द अपॉर्चुनिटी ओके नाउ इफ वी एग्जीक्यूट द हाइलाइटेड पार्ट Okay, now if we go to our record here. Okay, if you see a record, your attempt to access has been deleted. Mm. Okay, so the user who deleted this record may be able to recover it from the recycle bin. Deleted data is stored in the recycle bin for 15 days. So it will be in the recycle bin for 15 days. You can undelete it. Okay. Okay, you can undelete within 50 days, 15 days. But after 15 days, it will be uh, removed from the recycle bin as well. Okay. Okay. So in that case, what we can do is once we have retrieved this, this will be in the database. Okay. So what we can do is we will undelete it. Undo. Okay. Let's try to execute this and let's see what happens. Okay. As of now, there is nothing here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because this has been deleted from the database. Okay. Okay. So you will have to go back to the recycle bin here. Uh, let's say go to the recycle bin, and here you will see our test opportunity is there. So you can check it mm. and you can undelete it. Okay. Okay. Now if you go to our opportunities back, here we will see our test opportunity again. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. So there is another DML operation which is upsert. Okay. So what upsert does? Let's say in some instance, if you are not able to figure out if if that and that record is already there in the database or if it's a new record. Okay. Okay. So if it's already there in the database, then it will just go ahead and update that particular field that you add. Okay. okay, and if that is not there in the database, then upsert will in 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 insert it. Like at meet means it will create. Yes, it will create. So using upsert, you can create also. So let's okay. check it out how it works. Okay, so let's go to our anonymous window. Let's say if you have retrieved that particular uh, from here, or if you use upsert here, okay. test. Absurd <coughs> operation. Okay, close it today. Stage name equals to this. Blah blah blah. Okay, let's try to check this out. See, even absurd is working. So now, if you go to our org here, if you go to opportunity, we should see one record test absurd operation. Yes. Okay, now that uh, our record is already existing in that, and we are not aware whether if it's there or not. Okay, as we are retrieving, then like basically we are aware that it's there. But there are lots of situations, maybe in triggers, okay, or somewhere uh, you are executing the code and you are not aware if that is going to that uh, record is already there or not. In that case, you can use upsert. If it's there, it will update the same existing one. If it's not there, it will create a new one. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So let's say if you okay. want to add any field here, let's say if you want to add one account ID here, okay. This you can do using absurd also. Let's say if you want to do something like uh, instead of update here, you can use absurd. Okay, and okay. instead of name where name equals to test opportunity, you can use test absurd operation. Okay, you can do it like this. And that upsert update will work. Upsert will also work. Okay, if you use upsert here, that is also going to do the same thing. Okay. Okay. So here the database or uh, the Salesforce will decide whether it has to do an insert operation or here where, whether you have to do a update operation. I would like operation. Okay. So both the things you can do it from here. 
okay so these things are mostly handy when you are using triggers okay so when we get into triggers then we will get into the usage of upset okay 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 so okay let's check out some of the uh, custom objects okay and let's see how to handle those custom objects custom objects okay. so if we go here to our hospitality application okay and let's check it on check out some let's say hotels okay so here if you create one new there's only one required field which is the hotel name okay, okay. there's no other required field so this will be the same so we'll not get into this we'll check out some school here let's see if we have some fields here okay one school name is there and one annual fees there both of them are required field okay okay we'll so create add... one more some yeah yeah we can create one more. last date okay 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 so what i want you to do uh you can show your screen okay i'm changing the presenter can can you show see uh, show your screen and there i'll give you the access you go ahead and create that field for me yeah okay, okay. let me know when you're ready so that you can show that now okay so i'll make you the presenter okay okay now i can see yours i should be able to see your screen Okay, let's just log in and I'll give you the credentials. You can go ahead and use that particular org. Yes, then you then one second. Let me just try to log out from here. Okay, I'll ping you in the chat. Okay. Okay. So this is the ID, and the password should be. Okay. Try this password. Okay, maybe yeah, it's maybe the password. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'll, I'll create the field, no problem. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we go to schools here. And we'll create one new field here. Okay. Okay. So, what kind of field you want? Date. Okay. So, we'll choose a date field and we'll click on next here. Okay. And the field should be. Last due date or due date or last date to pay. Okay, due date. Or we can say fees due date or last date something. Okay. We can put some information like last date to pay the fees. Okay. You want this to be a required field? Always required. Required field? No. Okay, fine. No. Okay, we'll click next. 
and it should be we'll click next here also the page layout okay you have to add it in the page layout no problem okay so as you see here now the api name is underscore underscore c because it's a custom yeah. okay and then the api name is underscore underscore c okay so that is our school object and if you go to the fields here all the api names will be mentioned here so fees last date that is our uh, api name so using this we can get a hold of this particular field and you can update or manipulate this field okay, okay. using apex okay okay let's try to see how we can handle that okay so let's try to do one simple sql query and let's try to uh, retrieve uh, some values or uh, okay let's try to create one school okay let's try to create one school record and see how that works so the required fields are one is school name and one is school annual name. fees annual fees okay and if you see the annual fees this is the api name and the school name is always a standard field so that name will be name name okay so in the anonymous window what we can do is similarly as we created uh, a new record for opportunity so we have to do what? Here. yeah here what we'll write school okay schools I think schools. Huh? No, it's not school. See, this, okay. this we have to use. Okay. Okay, and this is what we have to use because it's a custom. Every custom object or uh, custom field, you have to use underscore underscore c. Mm. Okay. We'll put. Uh, we'll use any object name. Let's say S C H. Yes. New, and then again, what we will put is school. Okay. School. And then underscore underscore c. Mm. Okay, this is mandatory. Okay, so now one okay. school record will be created. Now, if you go ahead and if you do insert <laughs> sch, it will try to create one school record. Okay, but here okay. we will get one exception because the required field is not populated. Now, if you go ahead and yeah. execute highlighted, it will give us an exception. Oh, the session expired. I logged out, right? Okay. Mm. Okay, okay. One second. So we'll cut this. Okay. Mm. Well, we don't have to do that. We can use this one as well. Okay. Now well, let's try to put it here. Let me quickly log in. Okay, okay, let's log in. Okay, now let's try to open our developer console. Okay, maximize this and we'll open our anonymous window. Yeah, maximize the anonymous window as well. Okay. Now, uh, what we have to do is we have to go to our schools and from here we have to create one record. So, what we have to do is we just have to put one school, okay, school. underscore underscore c, okay, uh, use any variable name, sch equals to new school underscore underscore c constructor okay now we will insert our sch okay now we try to execute this okay, and let's see what happens okay the required field is missing same thing okay and what field is that that is annual fees okay. yes so let's try to insert that field here sch dot uh, annual annual fees let's see what is the name for that let me just view fields so okay where is, okay this is our field okay so annual underscore f e s okay after that yeah. underscore so c okay here it should be one amount field currency field is there okay so currency field what we can put is let's say 1000 
dot uh, as we have three digits of decimal you can put three decimal decimals that is not required as of now okay now we will try to insert okay and now we try to execute the highlighted part and we'll see what happens okay now we go to our school mm -hmm. our school's object okay so automatically one is created Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we don't want this. We have to put one school name. So by default, if you don't put uh, this name here, okay, automatically it will put the ID only. Okay, so that ID only it will generate and populate it here. Okay. 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 So we'll put some school name. Let's say uh, we'll put some DPS. Okay. Okay, and we will save it. Okay, so this is how you can get hold of a, a custom object. Okay, and you can create a new custom record. You can manipulate the custom record. Okay, like custom fields, everything you can change. Let's say fees last date. So if you last mm -hmm. date also, if you want to change, then you can do it from here also. Okay, so what you can do is ch dot uh, uh, fees underscore last underscore date underscore c equals to last. let's say date or uh, today let's say today is our today. last day can it will automatically get you the today and get you today's date but now if you go ahead and insert that it will create a new record okay so that is why we have to retrieve it first okay so what we can do is we we need some placeholder for that record to be saved okay mm -hmm. so we need to create one variable for that so let's say sch only that is fine equals to here we have to write one soql query so we have to write select so after select what we have to write select what i mean what we need to select like fees huh. annual, annual Correct. That Correct. We have. so we can put name we can put one name. id okay and then after that we have to write from so after okay. from what we have to write school okay so school, we have to write school underscore underscore c from school okay then now, we can give condition also if we want like yes. where annual fee is thousand or like that. correct so we can give that so as of now let's try to leave it blank and let's see what happens okay, okay. now let's try to execute the highlighted part so it is list has more than one row for assignment to s object okay so in the s hmm. object so all these are child, child children of s object only okay all the parent class is actually as a s object s object is also a class okay that we'll see later okay as of now mm -hmm. you just imagine that this is a placeholder for only one object but what this mm -hmm. is resulting into let's try to check it out what is the result of this query okay so let's go to our developer console and let's try to enter it in our query editor okay so here if you see there are three records it's retrieving mm -hmm. So it's retrieving three records and here we are trying to assign the three records into just one s object okay so obviously that will throw us an error it, it, it is not compatible with each other right so mm -hmm. if this was resulting in it uh, resulting in, in only one record then this will be fine then this will work fine okay 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 now if we put one where condition here where uh, let's say name equals to we can put uh, tps bocaro so only that that record will be updated inside this variable okay, okay. and then after that if we let's try to do one system dot debug and let's try yes. to sch okay now if we try to execute this highlighted part we will get it in our developer console here okay so that fields those, those fields that we have retrieved those fields have come here okay mm -hmm. so if we uh, retrieve fees as well uh, or maybe what we can do is fees underscore last underscore date underscore underscore c now if we do that that field will be blank because as of now there is no value in that 
today date it will okay, take we already updated today. today okay okay so that will come as today only okay is mm. last date from school okay Okay, we try to update this. It has not updated that yet. Fees yeah. last date. Did we execute this line of code? No. No, no. That is why it has not updated. So, so that is why it's showing us blank here. So what we can do is we can do sch dot. Uh, we can just copy this line. And we can paste it here, update, and then we can do this debug. Okay, so after that, we have to do an update as well. Okay, or else it will not re reciprocate in the database. Okay, now if you execute the highlighted thing, and if you go to the developer console, now it should show the date as well. Okay, now here the date as well. Is coming fees last date is coming and that date should reflect here as well okay so that is coming here also okay so there are certain functions also that you want to uh, you can use okay like you can add number of days add number of months also all those things you can do so when we explore the date object more then we can see that okay So whatever I told you today, is that all clear? You have any doubts, any questions? Oh, I can't hear you. Hello. 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 Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can yes. hear you. So you have any yes. questions, any any doubts, anything you are any yes. you ask? Here you see we can insert elements like uh, sch dot uh, fees last date like that we can insert now no like that we oh, cannot insert okay update okay okay yes i got it once you did update then only it will reflect in the database page database okay yes fine yes only then it will so if you insert then you have to insert one record Okay. okay, so you cannot insert like sch dot fees last date equals to something that you cannot insert like that. Okay. 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 You can update, you can uh, update, uh, insert or op update all these are directly in, on the uh, S objects. You have to use this DML operation on the S objects. Okay. 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 Anything else uh, that you want to add? No. Fine. Today I will try this. Okay, so if you try this, try for all the S objects that you have created the custom objects. Try to retrieve those fields. Okay, check out the uh, uh, standard fields as well. See the relationships. Try to retrieve the okay. relationship field. Okay, and see what what value you get. Okay. Okay, if you get the ID or if you get the name, try to get the name of that particular uh, uh, field. Okay, try to get. Let's okay. say in the opportunity, try to get the name of the account. Okay, that will be the task okay. for your day. Okay. You can use search, no problem. You can search it out on internet and you can okay. give me the solution. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to, if you go to the uh, sales application here. Opportunity name, we have to. No, you have to retrieve the account name. Okay, so if you go to okay. all opportunities here. So if you see, mm -hmm. uh, here account name is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want you to retrieve, uh, give me a list just like this. You retrieve all the opportunities with their account name. Okay. Okay, so only field I want is account name and opportunity name. Okay. Okay, so just write the query and let me, uh, give me the answer, okay? Okay, okay, okay. that's it from my side. Uh, unless you have any questions, we can wind up for the day. No, as of now, no questions. Okay, please try and uh, if you get doubts, let me know, okay? Okay. Okay, then. okay that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.